Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have 10 new Easter DIYs for you using supplies from the Dollar Tree. So let's get started crafting. For the first one, I wanted to make an Easter wreath. I'm going to use just a metal single wreath form from the Dollar Tree. This is the one that's like in like the 3D pack that's got like some extra little parts on it, but they're easy enough to pull off with like a pair of pliers. I thought like the individual wire wreath form would be better for this because I want to wrap it with Do Dollar Tree garland and I don't want to have to worry about covering like one of the three or four um, metal ring ones. I thought this would be a little bit simpler. And I'm just going to leave that one on there. I thought about making it into a hanger, but once you start wrapping it, <laughs> you kind of lose that. I wanted to do the egg shape, but I couldn't find the egg shape at my Dollar Tree. But you know, I guess you could always bend it like an egg shape. I ended up doing it round. But I want to combine this garland from the Dollar Tree and of course the little string carrots from the Dollar Tree to make a really cute little Easter wreath. I don't think I've ever used this specific garland from the Dollar Tree before, but it was really nice. The greenery is like wrapped around this like um, brown wrapped wire and so it's very moldable and stuff like that, but it looks nice too. And I'm going to use that to kind of disguise the wire of the wreath form. Now for the first um, row, as you can see, it's not super long. It's four foot and this is a large wreath form. I'm going to be making a big wreath here. I'm going to just start here at one end, just wrapping that wire around. But I thought I could do zip ties on the first row just because you're not going to be able to see them once I get good coverage on everything else. So I am just going to use some zip ties here, uh, like about every fourth of the way around, just to provide a good base and to make sure that kind of stays on the front of the wire and doesn't like slip to the back. This wasn't my first choice for like greenery for a carrot wreath, but I kind of like the fact that it's like green and white leaves. I think it looks really cool in the end. So that's how much coverage one of those garlands will get you. I'm going to use a total of five today, but you could probably get away with three if that's all you could find. So I'm just going to start just to kind of in a random place every time I kind of switched it up a little bit. And um, just wrap it around and wrap it around what we have. I want to just keep building it out and trying to make it like a more substantial reef. I want it to be really full. But as you can see, it kind of looks cool like that too. If you're going to use maybe a little bit less greenery, you could probably get away with it. I went ahead and picked up five and I wasn't going to use that many, but once I kept adding these, it got a little uneven and so then I went back and I had to use the fifth one to make sure that, you know, the greenery is um, kind of even and then I can just scatter those little string carrots all the way around. And I was really kind of impressed with this. Um, sometimes the garland and stuff like that from the Dollar Tree is kind of cheap and falls apart a lot, but this one was actually pretty good. So that's what it looks like after three. That's why I was th saying you could probably get away with three because that looks pretty good. But you know what? I bought the garland for this project, so I might as well use it all. So I'm just going to wrap these second two garlands around and we'll have a nice full wreath here. I really like those string carrots. I think they're always so fun to decorate with and I don't think I've ever made an Easter wreath with them before. So this was a fun little challenge. All of the DIYs today are going to be really super whimsical and fun. I had a lot of fun putting these together. Lots of carrots and rabbits and jelly beans and flowers, all kinds of fun ideas and eggs and stuff like that. So this is my last and final one. This one was kind of sewn together. Makes me wonder why. Um, and this is just going to get wrapped around just like all the other ones. 
and I wasn't going to use this one and then I really just kind of needed to even it out so that is why we're doing a garland in number five but as you can see in the end it looks pretty cool because like that brown wire like kind of looks like kind of like grapevine like it's like braided together so it gave me like a really cool effect now it's time for the little string carrots i am just going to hot glue those and just scatter those out all the way around the wreath just trying to keep my spacing um kind of even and i thought it would look best if i kind of just did them all in the same direction all the way around the wreath form. We're also gonna add a bunny touch to this wreath at the very end, and I think that made it really cute. I'm gonna dangle him down inside the carrot wreath, and I was really impressed with how well this turned out. I will definitely keep this Dollar Tree garland in mind for wreaths in the future. Just make sure that you pick up quite a bit when you see it in the stores because Four feet does not get you very far with these. The carrots though are a great value. You can get these in a bag like loose like this. You could also get them um, like on the garland and like the twine and just take them off. But look how cute the greenery looks combined with the carrots. It really made it look fun and festive for Easter. So I think that looks pretty good. Now just time for the bunny rabbit. I'm gonna use a Dollar Tree sign and I wanna kinda just dangle it down inside but I just wanna use like the bunny head. I thought that would be a little bit less colorful and kinda go with the vibe of that sign. And it's painted really nice. It's got glitter on its ears but otherwise I really like the little bunny face. I think it's super cute. So I'm just going to use a little heat here to remove his ribbon. And then these Dollar Tree signs are, you know, totally thin enough that you can cut these with just a razor blade. You don't need to use a saw or anything like that. Just go through it a couple of times and it should break right off. So once I got the bow out of the way, I was able to just, you know, cut it right along his little bunny chin here. <laughs> Do bunnies have chins? And I think I had to cut it like three times to get a good cut and then just bend it back. And then you just have a little bit of that like pressed wood to snip off. He's already got hangers through his ears, which will come in handy because I can use that part to hang on the wreath form. I'm just going to use my sanding block to kind of even up my cut there at the bottom and make it look a little bit more round. And then I'm going to um, remove the hanger here because it's not quite long enough and I'm just going to replace that with some twine and I can tie each bunny ear individually to the wreath form and it turned out really well. So just make sure that you're tying him up fairly even so he dangles down right. But isn't that so cute? I really loved how this Easter wreath turned out. Hopefully you like it too. I love DIYing and decorating for Easter. It is definitely one of my favorite holidays. And you know, you can use the wreath form to hang it or you can just attach some twine to that to hang your wreath up. But I absolutely love how it turned out. It's nice and big for a Dollar Tree wreath. And this is a little close up shot of our carrot and greenery Easter wreath with the little bunny rabbit hanging down inside. Isn't he so cute? I think it's really fun. I guess you could always kind of bend it if you want the egg shape as well to do it on a single ring like that. Now for the next DIY, we're gonna be using just a jar I found at the Dollar Tree. I made sure it had a little round top on the top of it, a little handle. And then I'm going to use one of their little tinsel bunny rabbits and one of the little kind of straw hats they have at the Dollar Tree. And I thought I could put this all together with the carrots and make a really cute little jar. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to first remove all of the tinsel from the bunny rabbit. And that's going to give us a great like little plastic cage. And I was thinking I've seen people like wrap these with twine. And it looks cute, but it kind of takes forever. <laughs> I've done it with rope before, 
which is a little bit less time consuming than the twine, I'm sure. But I thought maybe we could wrap it with the material that the sun, the sun hat is made out of. They also have little Easter purses that are made out of that same material. But I think it kind of looks like a faux seagrass. So once I got all of the tinsel off, um, the cage kind of comes apart, but I'm just going to pop it back together. It was a little loose, though. I was thinking about hot gluing it back together, but I've actually had that kind of fail when I've tried to do that on these. So what I'm going to do is just zip tie it. I thought that would probably be the easiest way. I'm just going to like zip tie it like in three different places and kind of bend that into the inside um, so it doesn't really get in the way. This has lots of little pegs, plastic pegs sticking out of the side, which actually really came in handy uh, with wrapping it with the hat. So to unwind it, it's so easy. All you have to do is get like a few strings here loose, and then all you gotta do is pull it. It's um, sewn with like a plastic thread, and so it breaks really easily. I'm just gonna go ahead and unwind like the brim of the hat, I ended up having lots of this left over, so I'll have to save that for another DIY. I thought we would start with the head first. It's gonna probably be the most challenging part. I'm just gonna start here right underneath the bunny ears and um, start by attaching it with a little bit of hot glue going all the way over to the edge. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to do like the this kind of weird shape with this. Um, I had to do a few little tricks to it to get it to work, but it turned out really cute. So I'm winding it around and I'm just overlapping it by a little bit, just so I don't have any gaps. I don't really want to be able to see the plastic cage in the end. And those tabs on the side definitely came in handy since this kind of has holes in it. You can kind of really get a tight fit. And it was pretty easy until I got to this part where you kind of have to start hot gluing it on because it's just going to slide right off because of that weird angle. So I'm just hot gluing it to get started and then I'm just going to keep going even though it's not very tight here. Um, I can always tighten that up with hot glue. So I just cut it and I'm going to kind of end it here on the back. I do have a front and a back on this, but honestly, they look pretty similar. I'm just going to use my um, tighter side um, to, for the front. And I just hot glued the corners together um, so that I can cool that off and trim off that excess material. It's going to give me that oval shape for the bunny head. What we're going to do with this bunny is um, put it, attach it actually to the jar. And we're going to fill the jar with carrots. It'd be really cute to fill with candy as well. But this turned out so fun. So once I trimmed this down to size, I made sure to hot glue it back to the cage again there so it's nice and tight at the bottom. And then I'm going to do the same thing at the other side. Once the hot glue kind of dries, you know, you can just kind of cut it, kind of manipulate it however you want. I want to make sure everything is still overlapping here. And that part of the bunny is complete. And then we can just tighten it up here at the top. It wasn't quite as bad, but what I did was just glue it together like I did at the bottom. And then I can just trim off the like little corners that are sticking out that look a little bit jagged. And good news, we were able to do that. I think the ears are gonna be a little bit easier. So again, I'm gonna use this material. I'm just gonna start here on the back of one of the bottom of the ears and attach with hot glue. And this was super easy. All you have to do is wrap around, really taking advantage of all those little pegs sticking out to catch it. Then when I get to the end, it gets a little bit tricky there at the end. So what I did was just glue it all together, just like we did at the other areas. And once that hot glue sets up, we can just trim that down into the rounded shape that should be the top of the bunny ear. And I'm glad that I tried to do this technique on this. I was a little bit scared of it, but it actually turned out really cute. And it's just something a little bit different than, you know, using twine or rope. And it actually kind of really went with the DIY well. So for the other ear, I just do the same exact thing. Glue it, wrap it all the way up, glue it to itself and to the cage here at the very end. And I'm not really going to add like... um 
any like decorations to him, no like face or bows on his ears or anything. I do do a bow underneath of him in the final project, but I kind of like the simplicity of just the silhouette. So that is set up pretty good. So now I can go in there and just trim that down to size. And it was a success. Um, this was such a fun DIY to do. I found a couple different jars at Dollar Tree that have like the little knob lids on it. I kind of wanted a clear glass one that you could see through. This one kind of has stripes on it, but it's still pretty, um, pretty see-through. So that is the hole and it fits perfectly on this to attach it to the jar. Isn't that fun? And then I wanted to fill it up with some of those little tiny carrots from the Dollar Tree. These are so cute. And even though there's lines on the jar, I think you can definitely tell that there are carrots inside. But again, you could put jelly beans in there, any kind of candy. That would be super cute as well. So here it is, our little seagrass bunny jar. I thought it needed a little bit of decoration from just the glass. So I'm going to use some of the carrot ribbon from Dollar Tree. Look how cute this is. It's kind of like a burlap background. And we're just going to wrap that around right underneath the bunny. Um, and just tie a simple little bow here just to finish dressing him up. And this was such a fun, creative DIY. I really enjoyed it and definitely something different. So I just tied it and adjusted till I kind of got it tight and even and trimmed off my tails. And this is how it turned out. Isn't that so cute? I never had thought about putting one of those bunny rabbits on something like that, but the hole in the bottom of it just made it perfect for that. You just have to find a jar with one of the like little knobby handles. Um, there's one with a metal top too that I think would work, but the glass one was just perfect. And see all the little carrots inside. Isn't that so cute? And that carrot ribbon is adorable as well. I hope you're enjoying today's video. If you are, be sure to hit that like button. It always helps my videos to do better. And don't forget to subscribe. We hit 30,000 subscribers. So now let's say 40,000 subscribers. <laughs> Dream big, right? Okay, for the next DIY, we're going to be doing a bunny head wreath. So I have a bunny head wreath form from the Dollar Tree. And then I found some of this floral egg garland at Dollar Tree Plus for $3. The reason I wanted this, it's nice and long. It's got the flowers, the eggs, the greenery, all of it attached. And I thought it would make a really easy wreath. Now, it probably wasn't as easy as I first thought it would be. Um, but I'll show you how I kind of problem solved. It's on like a plastic chain, which is kind of unusual, but I thought zip ties would work. I'm going to use some of these zip ties from the Dollar Tree from the hardware section. I'm just going to make sure to use the black ones so it'll kind of match in with the wreath form. And I think there's plenty on here to go all the way around the face of the bunny and even do the ears as well. So I just start with that chain. And it's kind of better to be able to zip tie to the crossbars. I'm doing the center um, wire on this one. Since it's so big and fluffy, I think it's not going to have any problem covering everything else. Each one of these pieces has like a leaf on it or a flower or an egg. And so I'm just kind of laying them out side by side, kind of see what we're going to get and zip tying that on. Normally I would zip tie from the back, but I kind of want to see what's going on here at the front so that I can adjust and stuff like that. So um, every so often and anytime I kind of get to a crossbar, I'm going to try to zip tie that because I definitely want that round shape for the bunny head. Now I thought about doing something different for the ears, but I had plenty of greener for that. So I will show you how I was able to make that work because it's a little thick for the ear parts, right? And so again, just making sure that, you know, everything is on there. I'm kind of inventorying the leaves because sometimes they fall off and stuff like that. You can always grab some from the end, kind of replace them. But 
some of them also have like these little double flowers on them. And I found that I could kind of wrap those around the bars a little bit if I needed to, if they were sticking out a little too far on the sides and not really staying with the shape of the wreath. I really wanted to try to keep the shape on this as much as I can. And these little bunny head wreath forms are not super big. I'm actually going to use this as like wall decor in my house. I'm not sure how well this garland would hold up outside. It kind of seemed like, you know, some of the leaves wanted to fall off a lot. And I'm not sure how durable like the eggs and stuff are going to be on there. But it was a lot of kind of um, messing with it and rearranging it to get it exactly how I wanted it. Now, once I get this looking pretty good and full, I don't want to be able to see the wreath form. We can start on the bunny ears. They are really close together. And in the end, I kind of had to like bend them apart from each other. So you could kind of see the shape of the bunny head because it was a little hard to see there for a minute. But this is how much I have left. I think it's going to be the perfect amount. I just cut it in half so I know exactly how much I have to work with. And then I can just wrap that around the bunny ear. Since this is like way thicker than I need for up here, I'm gonna make sure all the greenery and flowers go inside the bunny ears to make it kind of like full instead of just like an outline. Um, that was how I kind of solved that. But you know what? You could always use wood beads or other things for the ears as well. But I thought I have the garland. I might as well try to use it. I think it's really pretty. I just wish it was a little bit more durable, but even for $3, it was still a pretty good deal. Now there's not a whole lot of Easter eggs on this. And so they kind of end up in some really kind of random places. And um, you can always kind of pull these things off and rearrange. And I will do that here in a minute. I ended up moving all of the eggs down to the bottom part, like, um, it just kind of made more sense in the end. And time for the other bunny ear. Again, just kind of zip tying that chain wherever I can get it. I don't know why it was really on a plastic chain like this. I don't really enjoy working with it. Um, I guess it does make it super flexible and stuff like that. But for a project like this, it was kind of a little bit odd <laughs> to work with. But again, just zip tying everywhere where I kind of really think that you're going to need one to make it keep that shape and then just arranging it to make it look better. I had to really speed it up because it was a little time consuming. All the little um, tweaks and arranging and moving things around that I had to do um, and to really kind of shape it. When, um, when I first asked my husband, I said, does this look like a bunny head? And he's like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, I was struggling with this one. But as you can see, I just pulled off one of the Easter eggs. Um, and there's only three of them in total. So I'm just going to kind of scatter those around the round part of the bunny face. Um, and then just do flowers for everywhere else. And I just kind of want them... I always still want them there. I think they're cute, but just a little bit of arranging here and there because my husband told me it didn't look like a bunny head, right? And you can see how I kind of bit the bunny ears away from each other a little bit. And um, that did help it get that bunny head shape. But I think it turned out really cute in the end. Definitely wasn't as easy as a DIY as I thought it was going to be when I imagined it in my head. But there it is our little floral Easter bunny wreath. I think it's really cute. I mean, I guess it's a lot easier, you know, than doing the greenery, the flowers and the eggs and all that stuff individually. But I don't think I would use this DIY outside because I don't know how well it would hold up. But it's pretty cute, isn't it? A little bunny head wreath. Just another fun DIY for those little wreath forms. Now for the next DIY, I thought we would do a vase of jelly beans. So we're just going to use one of the large mason jars from the Dollar Tree. I don't really like like the screw cap on there that you can see. So I thought we would add a little Easter touch with some of this um, chick trim. 
and then do some springy flowers inside. And I want the vase to look like it's filled with jelly beans. So I'm just gonna wrap that little chick trim all the way around. Isn't that so cute? I thought that would go really well with these yellow flowers, the daffodils that I picked up from Dollar Tree. I picked up two bunches of those. And this is one of the larger mason jars, so it's pretty big. These are also from Dollar Tree, the jelly beans. I ended up using like two and a half bags of those. And I'm, I'm also gonna use a paper towel holder that you see there so I don't have to fill the entire thing up with jelly beans. That can kind of act as like a vase within a vase because I couldn't really find anything that would kind of fit in a mason jar for that purpose. Actually turned out really well. I wasn't sure what to do with the leaves on this. They're really stringy and like frayed. Wasn't too impressed with that. But I think two bunches is gonna be plenty for that large size mason jar. I'm really glad Dollar Tree is carrying like the larger mason jars. It makes it a little bit more versatile. So I'm just going to cut these to make them a little bit shorter. I do end up cutting them down a little bit um, in the end because I actually wanted them to be even shorter. But I'm just gonna go ahead and measure the little um, paper towel holder here. Um, and then I'm just gonna cut it off. As you can see, that's gonna like, just have all that kind of like dummy space in the center of it. And I can fill the jelly beans all around the outside. That way I don't have to use quite as many, but I did still need to use a lot. Now, at first it was a little tricky trying to get the jelly beans in here, but eventually I did find a good system. If I'm going to block off the little um, paper towel holder with my fingers, then I can just slide the jelly beans on the side because I'm trying to prevent them from going in the paper towel holder because that kind of defeats the purpose. And then I kind of shake them to the other side so I can kind of keep everything the same. That is how far one package of the jelly beans got me. So you can kind of see a little bit how big that jar is. But you could do this with any kind of Dollar Tree vase or anything like that. But I definitely recommend putting something in the middle so you don't have to, you know, use that many jelly beans. Now I thought these jelly beans were really colorful and fun. I thought they would look really good with the yellow flowers and it would just be super whimsical and fun for Easter. So here is the second bag. The second bag almost did it, but not quite. And I don't want you to be able to see any of the paper towel holder. So I am gonna have to open up a third bag, but you can kind of see how it looks so far. I guess you could always use a um, toilet paper holder in there as well. If you wanted to, it would probably be about the same size. So again, just trying to block <laughs> the hole in there. This part got a little tricky because there wasn't a lot of room to fit these in there. So I just kind of started sliding them in one by one to fill it all the way up to where you won't be able to see the paper towel holder in the middle. And as you can see, I did get a few casualties inside there, but all in all, I did pretty good. Isn't that so cute? I love decorating with candy. Uh, for Valentine's Day, I did like the conversation heart. So jelly beans are definitely something that reminds me of Easter. Now for the flowers, I tried it at first with the greenery on them but I really did not like the greenery on this one just because it was so stringy. And I was like, at first I started to try to trim them, but then you know, I was like, you know what? This doesn't really need greenery at all. I really just want those beautiful yellow flowers. And so what I'm gonna do is just pull the flowers off on all of these, remove the greenery and just save the flowers. And I like it better that way. It was just a little bit of extra work, but how springy are those flowers? Um, I grew up in the Midwest and whenever these flowers would bloom in the spring, it always told me that Easter was near. Definitely really beautiful. You can use fresh flowers as well if you've got them. Um, definitely um, wouldn't last too long though, unless you were able to figure out some way to do some water in there, I guess. 
So that looks pretty good. I am much happier with those. And anytime you need to kind of iron out your flowers to make sure they are standing up, if you have a heat gun, works really great for that. So I'm just going to give it a quick blowout to make sure all the flowers are nice and open. And the little jelly bean vase is super cute. It's kind of hard to show you at this angle because I didn't want all of my jelly beans to come out. But here is a closer view of our little jelly bean jar filled with yellow spring flowers. And I love the little chick trim. It's so cute. And it goes with those yellow jelly beans and the yellow flowers. Very whimsical and very cute. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about memberships here on my channel. You can get early ad-free access to my videos. It's $4.99 a month. You can cancel anytime. And it's a quick, easy way for you to support me here on YouTube. Okay, the next DIY, I'm going to try something with one of these little macrame hangers. It says it's a towel or tissue holder, but I thought it was really cute because it's got like the little wooden ring. It's got like the macrame cord, um, the dowel, and even some string hanging off of it. And I thought we could do a fun like little Easter egg mobile to hang on the wall. These eggs I found at Dollar Tree are so cute. Look at the pastel colors. I did have a couple busted ones in mine, but they only had so many packages, so you know what? I went ahead and bought them anyway, but only a few casualties out of those. But I love the polka dots and the stripes and the colors. I think they're so cute. And I thought we could do like a macrame Easter egg wall hanging. I thought that'd be really whimsical and fun. The hangers pop out pretty easily, and that leaves you with a hole on the top of a plastic egg. And they're all one piece eggs, so you don't really have to worry about it popping apart or anything like that. Now this comes out with four strings on this one um, and I only really need two over there. So I was kind of trying to figure out what I was gonna do with my extra two. I decided to just kind of wrap those around the top and knot them off up there so I can kind of tie them off and kind of get that out of the way. I'm gonna use the cord that's already on there and then I'm gonna add some more of the Dollar Tree macrame cord um, to kind of do like a little hanging pattern. I was thinking like wind chimes, but kind of wanted something to hang more in my house. And so I thought this would be a really fun way to use these little egg ornaments because I don't really have a tree or anything to put those on. Now, what I'm gonna do is I cut the first macrame cord a little bit shorter here. This is gonna be my end piece. I put a little hot glue inside the hole and then just glued the macrame cord trying to kind of push it into the egg just a little bit. Really doesn't take much. These little plastic eggs from the Dollar Tree are very lightweight. I don't think it's gonna take much to keep it on there. Mainly, I just want it glued to it. It doesn't really have to be in there too much. And then I left the other one the full length. So this one will be a little bit longer so we can kind of do a pattern where it is the longest in the center. And I kind of switched from polka dots to stripes on this one to kind of alternate my pattern. For the other side, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. Um, I had come already tied it off at the top, so I just cut one shorter, the same as I did on the other side. And then I'm going to hot glue a little polka dot egg there. And this turned out so cute. You could also do this like on a larger scale, hang it in front of a window or something like that. That'd be really cute for Easter as well. And this one back to the stripes for this longer one, kind of trying to make this as symmetrical as I can. That cord did want to fray a little bit, but I kind of needed the length on it. So I kind of made it work. A little hot glue on that will definitely fix it. Now for the macrame cord in the middle, I'm actually going to have to add the cord because again, this wasn't really a macrame um, wall hanging. I guess it's a towel holder or a tissue holder for your bathroom but I kind of like it more for home decor. So I just loop a piece of macrame cord and I am gonna need two because I wanna do kind of two rows on this one. So I'm just gonna cut that off, make one shorter than the other, and then just pull it through the loop like that. Now they had theirs tied at the top too, so I don't really need to tie it, but just to kind of make it look a little bit better, I went ahead and kind of tied that off as well. So I want one of them to be like 
super long and one of them to be short. That way we can kind of do three rows of eggs is what I was thinking. And I want to kind of alternate the pattern. So like a row of polka dots, a row of stripes, and a row of polka dots again. So just figuring out which colors I wanted to use where. Just want it to look nice and random. And then just cut this twine down. Again, a little bit longer, hot gluing that twine inside. And I'm really glad I thought to do this DIY. I really love how it turned out. I love doing any kind of like mobiles and stuff like that to hang on the wall. I think they look really fun for the holidays. So there's the longer one. And remember I had made this one a little bit shorter, but I'm going to measure, cut it off the same as the two on the side and hot glue that here. Now, I thought it needed maybe a few more touches. So I was thinking, you know, we got Easter eggs. Let's add some Easter bunnies to it. So these are the little wood Easter bunnies with the little pom-pom bunny tails from Dollar Tree. They're so cute. I thought I could like add them up here, like on that little wooden dowel, kind of fill in this space up here. Um, nothing very colorful or anything like that. It's gonna kind of blend in well with the wood dowel. And I just kind of hot glue the feet of the bunny rabbit, one on each side. Just another little fun Easter touch to this, but really cute. I never really thought to macrame like Easter eggs before, but you know what? This hanger kind of inspired me. And how cute is that hanger? I absolutely love it. You never know what you're going to find at Dollar Tree. And this is how it turned out. I think it's really fun, and I hope you enjoyed this DIY. Okay, are you ready for another one? These little chunky wood shapes for Easter are so cute. I want to give you another idea for how you can decorate the little wooden bunny. I thought flowers would be beautiful, so I chose the smallest flowers I could find at Dollar Tree, Tweedia, Hyacinth. Uh, pink and white I thought would complement each other nicely and they're about the same size so you know what let's cover this bunny rabbit with flowers it's already got that beautiful like wood grain on there so I don't really mind that showing through you do have to trim the flowers down a little bit though um, to make the stem of them short enough but normally your flower is gonna fall apart so what I ended up doing on this was just making sure to glue that stem to the wood. Therefore, it kind of all stays together. Um, so I, when I trim it off, I do leave a little bit of stem on there, enough to glue it down. And I thought we could alternate like pink and white and fill this out, make a little floral bunny. And it turned out so cute. It's not like a really crazy shape or anything. So I think it's going to be pretty easy to do that. So again, I just go like pink, white, pink, white, pink, white, and I'm just going to keep doing that all the way up. Now on the Tweedia flowers, the ones at the very top have less petals, so you'll have to kind of keep that in mind. The white ones all seem like they were the same, and this was so easy to do, and it just turned out so cute and springy, and just a really fun way to decorate this. You could also do this with like the little wood chick the wood uh, carrot, the wood Easter egg. They have so many of these. And every time I see them at Dollar Tree in the Easter section, I wanna pick one up because they're just so great for crafting. I was kind of inspired to make this piece. I used to have a bunny rabbit that was covered in flowers all over. It was very intricate. And whenever I would store it for Easter, it would always lose some flowers. So kind of gave me the idea to cover this with flowers and I think it turned out really cute. So I'm just going to do both of the bunny ears again, just alternating everywhere I can. And then maybe the small flower for the little bunny nose because I didn't have a lot of room there. And really the only place I have left is like the little bunny paw sticking out there on the side. So one more flower and this is complete. Isn't that so cute? From the front, you can't really tell it was made out of wood at all. And I really love it. I think it's super sweet. Let me show you how it turned out. Just trying to make sure that I didn't have too much overlap of the flowers. So it still has that great bunny rabbit shape. And this is how it turned out. 
our little floral Easter bunny. I love him. He's so fun. I was really going for fun on all of these Easter DIYs today, so hopefully that is coming through in this video. Isn't he cute? Love it. Okay, um, guys, I wanted to let you guys know that I have a private Facebook group. I always have it linked in my description below, and I would love it if you would join it. I also am on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest, and my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. And I don't have graphics for it yet, but I have a website now, craftybeach.net, where you'll be able to find all of my DIYs. Okay, and the next DIY, we're going to use some of these sequin eggs. I picked up two packages of these at the Dollar Tree. And again, they're egg ornaments. And I'm like, what am I going to do with these? So I was inspired by the mobile. I thought, ooh, maybe I could do like an egg chandelier, hang it from my light fixture above like my dining table. And so we're going to try it. These are the bamboo rings from the Dollar Tree. The great thing is they come in two different sizes, which I'm going to need two different sizes, kind of one within another. And then I just need some skinny ribbon. This was the only one I had. It's kind of a bright pinkish orange, but you know what? It looks bright for Easter and spring. So let's try it. I am going to use the string to hang the eggs. I'm also going to use the string to hang it to my light fixture. And I'm also going to use it to like tie the rings together. So we're going to start with the large ring first. Um, as you can see, it's going to take lots of ribbon because I need plenty to be able to tie it to my light fixture as well. So I am just double tying this and I'm going to use this one. I thought it would be best to kind of just use the ribbon that's already on them. Just kind of cutting that in half and I can tie it to it. Then I thought, you know what, I better measure these because I'm going to want them to be hanging, you know, fairly symmetrical and I thought we could do like a whole like chandelier and the sequence next to the light fixture is going to make them shimmer so I thought that'd be really cute so about five inches on this one I just tied a knot to kind of keep it on and then used that existing ribbon that I cut in half just to tie that on there I don't really like the way it looks at that point so I thought it'd be really cute if I just made it look like little bows by gluing the tails back over themselves like that and I think that looks really cute. Now I there's I have a total of 12 eggs. I ended up using um let's see 10 I believe um and I went ahead and did six on this outer ring which I ended up switching to five and I'll show you what I did with the extra one because my life fixture has five um, lights on it so it kind of made sense to like only have five I don't know why I did six I guess because I had six different colors but basically I'm doing the same thing on this one I just knotted it off on the top made a long tail and tied it to it now just a lot of tying and a lot of measuring on this one but it actually turned out pretty well I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to pull this off but I absolutely love it so tying the knot in this part of the ribbon was definitely key because then when you tie this on with ribbon, it's going to keep it from sliding off. And I really like the idea of making them into little bows too. Just made it more festive. So I'm trying to like alternate colors too, like kind of going from like cool to warm colors um, to alternate it. And it doesn't really ma matter if you have them spaced out evenly because you can always kind of like slide it back and forth on the bamboo ring and get it even if you want to. But this is where I should have stopped with like the fifth one. <laughs> but I do do a sixth one. And what I did in the end was just take the sixth one off and tie it to the center of my light fixture so it's even lower than the rest of them, which kind of added to like the little chandelier effect. Now that one is done, we can start working on the inner ring. This one's a lot smaller, so I'm only going to do four on this one. And I'm going to do this where these will hang lower, so it kind of cascades down. So instead of um, five inches, I think I did seven inches on this one. So I just tying a knot at seven inches. 
and then just kind of repeating the same pattern with these. These ornaments were pretty sturdy. I only had a couple of them uh, that the ribbon kind of wanted to fall out. So I just did not use those and um, just kind of spacing these out. Now it was kind of a lot of ribbon to kind of keep track of because on this one, I also tied a longer ribbon and that's not to attach it to the light fixture. That is to tie it to the other ring. So lots of like strings to keep in place on this one. I'll kind of show you how I did it to kind of keep them all straight as well. But aren't these eggs so cute with the little sequins sewn on them? I really like any of the eggs that I don't really have to DIY myself. They're kind of ready to go and decorate with and I couldn't pass them up. I just had to figure out some way to actually use them. <laughs> so this is the last one on this one. We're gonna tie this off and then I'm gonna show you how um, we're gonna put it all together. So to get all of these strings out of the way, these are the ones I'm gonna to use to tie to the light fixture. I just kind of um, gathered those all together and tied that off so they wouldn't get in the way because I need to attach that inner ring inside. And I'm really glad that I chose to do it with two different rings. It really gave it a fun cascading effect. So I'm just gonna do a loose little knot here with those to make sure those don't get tangled. I don't get confused by what's what. And then we're just gonna tie this ring on. This part was a little bit tricky, um, trying to get it even, but it's just a matter of tying two knots, just like we did before, and just trying to keep like that ring kind of centered. It is gonna hang down a little bit more in the center, but kind of added to the effect I was going for. You could also hang this like on your front porch or something like that for an outdoor Easter decoration. I think it would be really cute. I think it would hold up pretty well too. Now it is just a matter of going and getting this tied to my light fixture and seeing if we pulled it off, but look how cute that is. Kind of hard to show you, <laughs> but I'm trying to show you. See how it all dangles down? So cute, so shimmery with all of those sequins on the Easter eggs and the fun pastel colors. So as you can see, I have five lights on my light fixture and I just tied one of the strings to each one. The center ring comes down a little bit in the middle and then that sixth one that I didn't need, I just tied to the center um, of my light fixture. That is that green one that's hanging down in the very center. But I think it turned out really fun. What do you guys think about my little Easter egg chandelier? Okay, for the next DIY, check out these little bottle brush carrot carrots they have this year, like a carrot pick. I thought we could do a really fun little Easter um, vase with these since they're kind of like florals, right? I'm going to use that skinny vase that you see there from the Dollar Tree, some of the onion grass from the Dollar Tree, and one of their little grass rolled mats. I love crafting with that, but the rest of it's going on my kitchen table. I'm going to save the rest of it for sure. Now the onion grass, I was able to find one regular, and then the only other one I could find had the eggs on it. So I'm just gonna remove the eggs and I'm gonna remove any of like the greenery that is lighter, um, just so I can have a little bit more onion grass to kind of provide like a plant-like feel to go with the little bottle brush carrots, which I think are so cute. I love it. I love crafting with this. I covered a bunny rabbit with this in one of my previous videos. So I thought we could cover a vase. Wouldn't that be fun to have a grass vase? So I'm just gonna roll this around to see about how big I need it to be. And then it's pretty easy to cut because um, it kind of has lines there on the back. So you can kind of cut a straight line. It does shed <laughs> when you cut it for sure. So I cut it lengthwise and now I need to cut it this way too. So I'm just gonna kind of use a Sharpie to kind of sketch it out. So I'll know exactly how tall I need my grass mat to be. And this was such a fun thing to go with like the bottle brush carrots. I really love how this turned out. I'm just going to hot glue it 
And I never had a grass face before, so that's definitely something new and whimsical. So I just glue one end on there. It's kind of got like a rubber like rug backing on it. And I am going to glue the other side. Next year, I'm definitely going to have to pick up some more of this grass at Dollar Tree. It was Dollar Tree Plus, and you get a giant roll of it. I think it was $5, but well worth it. Isn't that so cute? Now for the greenery, again, we're using the onion grass that I already prepared. So I kind of have two of those. I noticed that I think I had trimmed some of these off for a previous DIY. So they were a little bit shorter. So I'm going to kind of get rid of any of those that don't really make sense. And I thought this would be nice tall grass coming out at the very top of this floral arrangement. And then we can do the little bottle brush carrots kind of coming in from the sides. I don't have to do anything to them. Just pop them in. I think three looks really cute together like that. And you can kind of do one a little bit taller than the other ones. But then I was thinking, I need a little bit more plants, a little bit more florals. So I was trying to think of a floral that I could do that wasn't too busy. That would kind of go with like the orange and green vibe, not really clash with it too much. So I chose some little white flowers from the Dollar Tree that are just going to be perfect. They are kind of already on like little clusters here. So I'm just going to pull like three of those off and um, put those in there. Some of them were kind of missing flowers. So I'm just going to kind of replace those a little bit. But I'm going to kind of put them. There's just a little bit of space left in the vase between each one of the little bottle brush carrots. And I think this was the perfect final touch to this little Carrot Easter floral, super whimsical and fun for sure. Isn't that so cute? I really love the idea of using the grass on the vase. Very unexpected and very cute for Easter. If you weren't going to do carrots, you could always like glue like little painted wood Easter eggs on that. That'd be cute too in the grass. Okay, for the next DIY, I wanted to do like a little shadow box of Easter eggs. So I picked up one of these Dollar Tree signs. It's got pretty tall sides. So I think we can get that shadow box look. And then I got a bunch of these little string eggs from the Dollar Tree. I love these. I wish they just came individually though, instead of on the little picks because I always have to take them off. And they're a little tricky because you don't want the string to come unwound. So I'm just using my heat gun. I just have it turned on and I'm just heating up the glue on all of these and hoping I have enough to kind of do like eggs all over, like kind of like a display piece of like a exhibit of Easter eggs. I had a couple of pink ones left over from last year and this year I was able to pick up lots of different colors too. And so I think I'm going to have a random selection. Now, this is what happens if you pull it off without heating it up, but one of mine was actually kind of already apart like that. It came in the package like that. Just a matter of gluing the string back down. But you have to be careful with them. They're really cute, but they don't like to really come off those picks. So then I'm just going to kind of start alternating them, laying them out. I'm going to have them all kind of going one direction and I want my pattern to be random. I don't have a lot of pink so I have to kind of spread that out evenly. And then I had a few more of these left over from last year so I think I'm going to have plenty to be able to fill out this little shadow box. So we're going to make some egg art here. <laughs> that looks good so five times four, 20 of the string eggs. Now it's just a matter of attaching them. They actually fit really nice on this square frame like this, but definitely lay them out in advance. You know, you don't have to do a square. You could always do like a um, like portrait or landscape size, whatever you've got, but this worked really well, especially because the frame has the like larger um, sides, but it is that kind of like unfinished wood. So I'm actually gonna DIY that too with something that's gonna coordinate well with the string Easter eggs. So I've got them all glued in place and I'm gonna use this, the green floral moss from Dollar Tree to kind of try to represent like grass all around the sides with all the Easter eggs inside. I thought that would be a fun way to decorate it. And 
this is a little messy. It does stick together, the floral moss. But I'm just going to do like half of a side of a frame at once so it doesn't set up too much and just glue that. I do want it to kind of look um, a little bit, you know, random on the bottom and really kind of stick out to give you that like greenery effect. And I'm really glad that I added this because I think it really took it to another level. It really made the eggs pop in it. And I love the idea of just making art like this with the Dollar Tree Easter eggs because I love them and I always have to pick some of these up for sure. This would be really cute to do with the flocked Easter eggs that they had on the garland in Dollar Tree Plus this year too. The ones that I used to make the Easter candle holders. I have lots of Easter DIY videos if you haven't seen them yet. Easter is definitely one of my favorite holidays to decorate for um, besides Christmas. So here at the top, I'm just covering up the hanger. It's kind of got like a new kind of hanger on it where it goes all the way through. So I can have the hanger on the back without really having to worry about that being in the way. And that really kind of like cleaned up that frame and just gave it a really fun little Easter vibe. I think it goes really well with the eggs. I want the back of it to be kind of clean. I don't really want any of the floral moss down between the eggs. So just kind of blowing out any extra pieces that may have fallen in there. I was going to do a bow on the top of this, but I thought it didn't really need it. I think it looks super fun for Easter and a fun way to decorate with those little string eggs for sure. What do you guys think about our little Easter egg shadow box? Super groovy. I love those eggs. You can see how beautiful they are. Um, especially when you like get lots of different colors like that, kind of mix them all together. I always like kind of doing like a display like this to kind of display something a little bit more unexpected, like little Easter eggs. Okay, for the next DIY, I picked up one of these tear trays at Dollar Tree Plus for only $5. It's a bunny rabbit shape and it's light blue. I thought this would be so cute in my home for Easter. And I haven't done any new Easter tear trays this year. I think cause St. Patrick's Day was so close and I did a St. Patrick's Day one this year. So I definitely need one cause I need to take my St. Patrick's Day stuff down. And it's so cute. So this is how it kind of goes together. It folds out, it's got like two different pieces and then it's got the two different trays. They have little hooks that come around and open up really sturdy. But then again, you can always fold it up and store it away. Isn't that so cute? Well worth $5. I think it came in like maybe pink too, but I saw the blue and I had to have it. Now I'm going to kind of give a nest-like feel by using the brown floral moss on both tiers for filler. And I thought that would give me a fun, like kind of nesty effect. So it's just a matter of kind of spreading these out, breaking it apart, covering all of the bottom of both tiers. And I couldn't find a lot of items at Dollar Tree to decorate it with this year, but I was able to find some really cute items from um, Dollar Spot at Target. That really goes with like the coastal decor of my house. So the blue, and like those different like rope kind of items from a Dollar Tree or the Dollar Spot, I thought this would look really coastal. As you can see, these are $3 from Target. You get three of the carrots. And you, I also got the eggs that are like that as well. So cute. I mean, seriously, you cannot make these for $3. And they're so coastal looking, right? So I'm just going to kind of gather those together, like kind of stack like three of the carrots together, kind of like that, into just a pile of carrots on the bottom tier. Kind of hard to show you a tear tray from this angle, but not a lot of DIYs going into this, just kind of adding things to it. These are the eggs. As you can see, you get five of these for $3 at Target Dollar Spot, and they are perfect. They look so high end. I'm gonna go ahead and use all of them piling them up on the top tier to kind of make it look like a nest full of Easter eggs. 
Now I'm gonna turn it around. I don't think I only need a few more items here. I found these little flocked chicks from um, the dollar spot at Target too. Only a dollar, so cheaper than Dollar Tree and they are so cute. This is the little yellow chick. We're gonna put him right here on the top next to the eggs. I also found this for a dollar at Target dollar spot. It's a little like egg shell cracked with little Easter yellow flowers inside. I thought that would be perfect for a tear tray. It'll match that little yellow chick. And then I have some of these little moss bunnies. I think I got these last year at Target dollar spot. Um, they're kind of small. They're on about the same scale as the little chicks. So I'm gonna pile a couple of those on the bottom next to the carrots. This was such an easy tear tray to put together. The bunny shape of the Dollar Tree tear tray really adds to it and all of the little dollar spot pieces in there. Looks so cute. It was absolutely probably the easiest tear tray I have ever put together, but hey, it works. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed these 10 new Easter DIYs and got lots of fun ideas from this. Um, and don't forget to like the video, comment your favorite DIY in the comments below, or just come say hello. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it. Enjoy.
thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of my video. And I also want to give a huge thank you and shout out to all of my Crafty Beach Bum members for supporting me here on YouTube. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R., Tracy Knight, Nancy Wunner, Julie Miller, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, Sandy C., and our newest member, Lindsay. Thank you so much for supporting me. I really appreciate you so much. It's really easy to join. All you have to do is hit the join button under today's video. And if you'd like more Dollar Tree DIYs, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here. Happy Easter!